بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اسلام علیکم لیکچر ٹین پویٹری ون کوس کوڈ فور زیرو تری فرسٹ اف آل ویل ہیو لٹل ریکیپ آف لیکچر نائن وی ڈسکسٹ دیٹ دا پرپز آف رائٹنگ دا فیری کوین فار سپینسر ہی ویری کلیئرلی مینشن دیٹ ان اے لیٹر ٹو سر والٹر ریلے ہی دیٹ لیٹر واز published in the 1590s edition and in that he mentioned that the purpose of writing this book is to fashion a gentleman in noble or in virtuous and gentle discipline. Then uh, we discussed the general plan of the book also that uh, the general plan of the book was magnificent. It, was, it had an elaborate plan uh, that uh, consisted of uh, writing 12 books and each book will contain 12 cantos. Cantos are parts of the book. So each book will have 12 parts. F um, it will be there will be a feast held by Gloriana the queen the queen of the fairy land and they every day there will be a stranger and that stranger uh, would be in trouble in some suffering or some misery uh, afflicted by a giant or a tyrant or a dragon so uh, the stranger would ask for help and Queen Gloriana would assign a knight to resolve that problem and to bring honor and to bring respect to the uh, Queen Gloriana so um, there would be great wars or exploits of these soldiers these knights so each book would discuss the great wars and exploits of the soldiers and knights each book will have uh, uh, a knight and uh, it will discuss the adventure of one knight each knight will symbolize 12 virtues of aristotle against the 12 vices uh, Prince Arthur is the central figure of the uh, book and um, he, it is also said that uh, some critics believe that uh, Prince Arthur here refers to um, the Earl of Leicester. Uh, ideal Knight, all these uh, 12 knights in 12 books, they symbolize one of the virtues. They are symbolic of magnificence. They are symbolic of the virtue. So these are ideal knights. Once again, um, if we talk about allegory, since it is an allegorical representation of life, uh, on the surface level, it is a story of a knight uh, helping a person, and there is a vice also on the other hand. It is an allegory of virtues and vices. एक लेवल जो एलेग्री का है वो विर्जू अच्छाई और बुराई के दरमियान है कि एक तरफ अगर अच्छाई है तो दूसरी तरफ बुराई है और अच्छाई हमेशा बुराई को डोमिनेट करती है एन एलेग्री ऑफ द टाइम्स एंड पीपल इसमें ये जो कैरेक्टर हैं वो सब फिक्टिशियस कैरेक्टर्स नहीं है वो फिक्शन के या खुद ईजाद करदा सारे कैरेक्टर्स नहीं है एलेग्री में इसमें जो कैरेक्टर्स हैं वो सम टाइम्स हैव गॉट दे हैव गॉट हिस्टोरिकल एंड पॉलिटिकल सिग्निफिकेंस आल्सो वो कुछ लोगों को रेफर करते हैं जैसे प्रिंस आर्थर जो है वो आर्ल ऑफ लेस्टर को अगर रिप्रेजेंट करता है तो दैट इज दैट हैज गॉट हिस्टोरिकल सिग्निफिकेंस या फिर क्वीन ग्लोरियाना जो है अगर क्वीन एलिजाबेथ को सिंबलाइज कर रही हैं एंड द वे ही इनवोक्स हर द वे ही आस्क्स हर फॉर हेल्प एंड द वे द uh, mighty Isle uh, of um, Britain, it is uh, addressed. This is, uh, th this is how it symbolizes the times and the people or the place. It is a story of romance and adventure. It is a story of adventure in the sense that the knight has undertaken that task or that he has been assigned that task by Queen Gloriana. Queen Gloriana ne usko wo task diya hai aur wo usko ja raha hai usko fulfill karne ke liye. Um, he will fight against certain um, evils or uh, so far what we have seen that um, they have come uh, to a cave and they could not find their way out of that. So this uh, misery or this suffering, the problem is not necessary that it is a human or an animal to create it. It is also natural. Moreover, the characters and actions have got double meaning. 
there are uh, six books uh, uh, out of these 12 books as i discussed uh, just discussed that um, originally it was planned that there will be 12 books and in each book there will be 12 cantos there will be 12 parts of each book only six books were completed the seventh book is unfinished once again allegory the concept uh, the understanding of the concept of allegory is very important um, allegory may kisi bhi story may characters jo hai wo represent karte hain wo unke koi significance hai koi meaning hai wo sirf ek surface level par ek story nahi hai allegory mein do parallel stories chalti hain ek surface level par aur ek deeper story hoti hai jo deeper story hai wo true message hai for the readers ke us waqt mein ye ho raha tha ya is tarah ke religious ya moral values thi ya is tarah ke se jo historical figures hain wo is tarah se उस टाइम पे उनका क्या किरदार था या उनकी क्या स्टेटस था सोशल स्टेटस क्या था उनका सो एलिग्री वंस अगैन इज एन एक्सटेंडेड मेटाफर एक एक्सटेंडेड मेटाफर है एज वी टॉक अर्लियर के मेटाफर में सिर्फ एक चीज की कैरेक्टरिस्टिक दूसरी को एट्रीब्यूट कर दी जाती है दूसरी को डेजिग्नेट कर दी जाती है एक्सटेंडेड मेटाफर में या फिर एलिग्री में सिर्फ एक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक एट्रीब्यूट नहीं की जाती है एलिग्री में पूरी स्टोरी के डुअल मीनिंग है उसमें हर एक्शन के डबल मीनिंग है हर कैरेक्टर किसी चीज को सिग्निफाई कर रहा है हर इवेंट हर हैपनिंग का कोई मकसद है हर हैपनिंग का कोई डबल मीनिंग है सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ एलिग्री यूज इन द फेरी क्वीन देर इज मॉरल एलिग्री देर इज रिलीजियस एलिग्री एंड देर इज पोलिटिकल हिस्टोरिकल एलिग्री मॉरल एलिगल में एलिग्री में मॉरल वैल्यूज जो है उसको फोकस किया जाएगा रिलीजियस एलिग्री में मॉरल वैल्यूज लाइक ट्रूथ होलीनेस सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स विल बी देयर रिलीजियस एलिग्री में जो रिलीजियस कंडीशन थी जो स्टेट ऑफ चर्च थी कि उनके क्या हालात थे जो रिलीजियस लोग थे वो किस तरह की टीचिंग थी या क्या उनका किरदार था दैट विल बी रिफ्लेक्टेड देन पोलिटिकल एंड हिस्टोरिकल एलिगरी में वो जो कैरेक्टर्स है स्टोरी में कैरेक्टर्स है जो उसके कैरेक्टर्स इवेंट्स जो है वो किसी पोलिटिकल या हिस्टोरिकल इवेंट की तरफ इशारा करते हैं या वो उन लोगों को रियल लाइफ में सिम्बलाइज करते हैं सो इन दैट स्टोरी दैट वी स्टार्टेड इन लेक्चर नाइन द स्टोरी वॉज दैट देर इज अ नाइट जॉर्ज विद and he has started off on a journey he has been given a task by queen gloriana just before the, uh, the start of the uh, the canto 1 we had four stanzas these four stanzas um, are written in spenserian stanza and the lay of out of the stanza is that that eight lines are written in iambic pentameter and we discussed the rhyme scheme of these stanzas and the ninth line is um, the la- ninth line of each stanza is written in alexandrine uh, which contains 12 syllables um, which is a longer line because in iambic pentameter usually there are 10 syllables so 10 syllables ki bajaye alexandrine mein 12 syllables hain and this is usually a concluding line ek line hai jisme jo bahut significant hai bahut important hai jiske bahut sare purposes hain we'll discuss this uh, the use of this particular meter at the end um when we started off with the with the text uh the poet started off with the invocation with the, he first started his address to the readers he said that i am the one i have the i am the one who have written this pastoral type of poetry earlier and now i undertake this task this uh heavy this burden some task that i am going to start i am going to write about something which is of a great significance i am talk about uh, going to talk about the warriors and soldiers whose uh, praise nobody has ever talked about then he there is an um, invocation to the muse he there are a number of references to the mythology uh, uh, there are a number of allusions he seeks help from cleo the muse of history he seeks fa- help from uh, cupid the god of love he seeks help from venus the goddess of beauty he seeks help from mars the god god of love and moreover finally he 
uh, last but not least he seeks help from the uh, the queen elizabeth and uh, the uh, who is from the greatest isle here greatest isle this phrase refers to the patriotic feelings the patriotic touch that was an essence that was a characteristic feature of the elizabethan age so uske bare mein bhi hame pata chala then finally the red cross knight he started off with the journey and um, he started off he his description is given we are told about his armors that what type of dress and arms he was wearing he started off and um, he had what he represented he represented holiness and with him there was a lady also she was lady una who uh, she had descended from a royal family and uh, uh, her uh, ancestors they had ruled over the world and now a dragon had captured her land her the castle uh, her father's castle and the dragon had taken control of her father's land his uh, state queen gloriana gave this um, assignment to the knight to the red cross knight who was bearing that sign also with him and he gave great importance to his dead master the knight was given this task uh, to fight against the dragon to get the state of uh, lady una's father back from him and to bring honor and to bring bring respect to queen gloriana then uh, we are given a bit of description about lady una that uh, she along with her she was very fair she was riding on an ass and that was also as white as snow and she had covered her face with a wimple with a veil and she uh, was having a lamb also with her who was also very white now lady una represents truth true religion and the lamb with her the white lamb represents innocence then uh, we saw that uh, they uh, were on their way and suddenly the cloud uh, there were lots of clouds and the sky was overcast mausam is kadar kharab ho gaya ki unko aur sirf clouds nahi the wahan par there was heavy rain and storm तूफान आ गया था उनको मजबूरन उनको किसी जगह पर पना लेने की जरूरत पड़ी क्योंकि तूफान बहुत शदीद था दे टुक रिफ्यूज इन अ केव दे नियर बाय दे फाउंड अ केव और जो जिस केव में वो गए वहां इट वॉज वेरी थिक बहुत थिक दरख्त उसके इर्द गिर्द थे एंड इट वॉज सो डेंस्ड दैट नो लाइट कुड पास थ्रू दो branches of the trees uske baad we had a number of lines here that was a sort of di uh, digression digression is basically the divert diversion from the main topic of the story ab jo main story hai usme to kya hai ki lady una queen gloriana ke paas lady una hi hai aur un unke jo state hai unke fathers ki wo dragon ne us par kabza kar liya hai aur un logon ko us jagah se nikal diya this was the main story and lady gloriana Uh, gave this task to the knight the, the red cross knight to get that land back for lady una's father this is the story and they are on their way to take revenge from the dragon and to expel to expel the dragon from their state now on their way uh, since the uh, weather was um, it uh, the weather was bad and uh, it was overcast and they were forced to take refuge they were take uh, forced to take shelter in some place nearby they found a cave unko ek cave nazar aaya usme foran ja kar unhone pana le li aur us waqt ki tar par to unko aise laga ki ye unke liye ek blessing tha ki unko ek jagah mil gayi hai jahan par ke wo toofan rukne ka intezar kar sakte hain aur uske baad wo apni journey start kar denge now since they were um, they were uh, deceived when they entered the that cave wahan par bahut thick darakht the ke roshni bilkul usme se nahi guzar sakti thi not even the uh, star the light of stars at night to us sari situation mein wo jo storm tha when they looked at the trees around unko wo uh, apna jo maqsad tha ya jo rasta jo jahan wo ja rahe the wo sab bhul kar wo deceive ho gaye 
وہ اس کے جو اس کے اندر اس غار کے اندر جو درخت تھے اس نے انہوں نے اس کو دیکھنا شروع کر دیا وہاں پر بہت زیادہ رستے تھے وہ آس پاس جو درخت تھے ان کی بیوٹی کو اپریشیٹ کرنے لگے اور رستوں آگے ہی آگے رستے پر چلتے چلے گئے اب ایک وقت ایسا آیا جب انہوں نے یہ سوچا کہ اب انہیں واپس جانا چاہیے وی ہیو لانگ ڈسکرپشن آف دیز ٹریز اب ہمیں ان سارے درختوں کے نام بتائے گئے ہیں پوئٹ نے ان سب کے نام بتائے ہیں ان کا مقصد بتایا ہے کہ یہ کس چیز کے لیے یوز ہوتے ہیں کوئی تابوت بنانے کے لیے کوئی کسی درخت کی لکڑی یوز ہوتی ہے کسی کی فرنیچر کے لیے یوز ہوتی ہے کسی کے لیے کسی کی جو ہے وہ عمارتوں میں استعمال ہوتی ہے کسی کی لکڑی جو ہے وہ بہت خوشبودار ہے کسی کی لکڑی جو ہے وہ میڈیسنز میں کے طور پہ کام آتی ہے تو جو مختلف طرح کے درخت اس جنگل میں اس وقت موجود تھے اس کیف میں جو موجود تھے ان سب کی ڈسکرپشن ہے بٹ دس از اے سارٹ آف ڈائگریشن ٹو دا مین اسٹوری کیونکہ وہ جو مین اسٹوری تھی اس سے ہٹ کے رائٹر نے اور یہ بیسک پرپز نہیں تھا وہ وہاں پر ان درختوں کو دیکھنے نہیں گئے تھے کہ کس طرح کے درخت ہیں یا وہ درخت کس کام آتے ہیں سو دس واز اے ڈائگریشن فرام دا مین ٹاپک کہ اصل بات سے ہٹ کے جو ڈسکشن ہو رہی ہے جو جو جس چیز کی ضرورت نہیں ہے اس کو مینشن کیا جا رہا ہے اوکے دین دے فار گاٹ وین آفٹر آل دس ڈائگریشن وین دے تھاٹ دیٹ دا اسٹوم از اوور اینڈ دے شوڈ ٹیک دیئر وے بیک کہ ان کو واپس اپنا سفر جو ہے وہ شروع کرنا چاہیے دے فاؤنڈ دیٹ دے کوڈ ناٹ ریچ دا پوائنٹ فرام دیئر دے ہیڈ بگن اور فرام ویئر دے شوڈ اینڈ کہ اس کیو میں تو وہ شیلٹر کے لیے آئے تھے نا کہ اب انہیں یہ سمجھ نہیں آ رہی تھی کہ انہوں نے کہاں پر یہ سفر ختم کرنا ہے یہ جو شیلٹر ہے یہ جو ان کے ریفیوز ہیں یہ اس قدر لمبا ہو گیا کہ ان کو کوئی باہر نکلنے کا رستہ ہی نہیں مل رہا تھا دے واک اے ویری لانگ وے بٹ ایوری ٹائم دے تھاٹ دیٹ دے آر نیئر انہیں ہر دفعہ جب یہ لگتا کہ اب وہ بہت نزدیک پہنچ چکے ہیں اب وہ باہر نکلنے ہی والے ہیں اس ساری پزل سے It worked for them as a kind of puzzle, جیسے بچوں کا پزل ہوتا ہے جس میں وہ اندر بھول بھلائیوں میں گم ہو جاتے ہیں اور پھر انہیں باہر ملنے پہنچنے کا رستہ نہیں مل رہا تھا ان کے لیے یہ کیو بالکل ایک اسی پزل کی طرح ثابت ہوا اور انہیں نہیں پتہ چل رہا تھا کہ کس طرح سے کس رستے سے وہ باہر پہنچ سکتے ہیں ہر رستہ انہیں ایک ہی جیسا لگ رہا تھا ایک ہی طرح کا بیٹن پات تھا جس سے لوگ بہت دفعہ گزرے ہوں they were looking for it they thought that this uh, particular way would lead them back to the uh, to their main path now uh, if you talk about allegorical representation here the red cross knight represents saint george and the uh, who is the champion of the christian holiness he is the representative of the anglian church also on the other hand we have got uh, with her, with him we have got una uh, who is symbolic of truth who represents truth he she is um, representing true religion also then on the other hand we have got dragon who represents error so talking about uh, spencer's language once again his language his spellings are archaic he deliberately used these but there is um, there is a little trick also that can be used to understand his language اس کے تمام ٹیکسٹ میں اگر ہم یو کو وی سے ریپلیس کر دیں گے تو ہمیں ماڈرن انگلش اکویلنٹ ورڈز مل جائیں گے اسی طریقے سے اگر ہم آئے کو جے سے ریپلیس کریں وائی کو آئے سے ریپلیس کریں اور فائنل ای کو ایٹ موسٹ آف دا پلیسز اگر ہم ڈیلیٹ کر دیں تو ہمیں ماڈرن انگلش ورڈز مل جائیں گے اینڈ دیز اینڈ ہز لینگویج از ناٹ ویری ڈیفیکلٹ ایکسپٹ فار سم آف دی الوژنس اس نے کچھ ریفرنسز دیے ہیں جن کے کچھ اسپیسیفک میننگ ہے وہ کچھ پرٹیکولر چیزوں کو مائتھالوجی میں ریفر کر رہے ہیں ادر his language is not very difficult it's um, nearly uh, like the modern English okay starting from the point uh, where we left the earlier lecture uh, in now this is uh, the point from where we have to begin at last resolving forward still a fair till that some end they find or in or out that path they take that beaten seemed most bare and like to leak the labyrinth about so they were finally they resolving forward to uh, forward still to fare resolving as they were thinking they were pondering that which path to take to bring an end to this uh, path 
to that cave because they wanted to get out of that cave now ab us cave se bahar nikalna chahte the kyunki wahan par to bas sirf shelter ke liye enter hue the wahan par unhone darakhton ko dekhna shuru kar diya uske baad we had a long description of the trees ke wo usi ki jo thickness hai unhi darakhton ki jo types hain un wo kis kaam ke liye use hote hain wo usi mein involve ho kar reh gaye aur wo unko apna asal rasta jo hai wo bhul chuke the wo usko kho chuke the so they were continuously thinking they were wondering which path they took some of the paths uh, that were most uh, beaten but uh, every path in the end seemed to be the same which when by track they hunted head throughout at length it brought them to a hollow cave amid the thickest woods the champion stout aft soon dismounted from his cursor brave and to the dwarf a while his needless spear he gave now what happened they reached by when uh, meanwhile when they were looking for some way to get out of that place to get out of that cave that they had entered for taking shelter they found a that uh, the most beaten path that they had taken that led them to a hollow cave wo ek cave tak pahunch gaye amid the thickest woods jo ke bahut ghane jangal ke darmiyan mein tha the champion stout of aft soons aft soons at once dismounted from his cursor brave the champion here refers to the knight stout as brave so the brave knight he uh, he got off his uh, horse and he gave that uh, spear that he not did not need to the dwarf he gave that spear he did not need he gave it to the dwarf be well aware quoth then that lady mild mild is m i l d mild the modern english equivalent be well aware now this is a kind of warning coming from the lady so lady una warns the knight the um, she quoth is says so lady una uh, the kind lady the soft gentle lady she says that be well aware least sudden mischief ye to rash provoke that your sudden action might provoke some kind of rashness the danger hid there is a danger the, the danger is hidden the place unknown and wild since the place is unknown and wild there there, there may be a hidden danger breeds dreadful doubts so she says that the dreadful doubts the fears that i have in my, uh, that i have they they ask me to be careful at this place since this is an unknown unknown and wild place this is a um, wild in the sense that uh, it is not known oft fire is without smoke and she gives the example here that uh, my fears they are telling me that sometime often the fire is without the smoke there is no sign of the smoke still there is a fire so same uh, similar might be the case of this situation we cannot see any danger but we should be uh, she warns the night that you should be careful from this situation ho sakta hai yahan par koi khatra chupa ho koi khatarnak cheez yahan par मौजूद हो जो कि हमें नुकसान पहुंचा सकती हो अ पैरल विदाउट शो पैरल इज अ डेंजर विदाउट शो विदाउट एनी साइंस विदाउट एनी मार्क्स देयर फोर यू स्ट्रोक सर नाइट विद होल्ड सो बिफोर यू स्टार्ट बिफोर यू टेक एनी एक्शन विद होल्ड यू बेटर बी relaxed and uh, you should slow down the process till further trail made S- till the time we have some indication we s- till the time we have some sign a lady said he shame were to revoke the forward footing for an eden shade virtues gives her self light through darkness for to wade where is to pass so uh, here the knight replies the lady he says that he talks to uh, lady ona he says says that it is a shame now to get back if i step back um, because of some hidden danger the danger is not there i cannot see it and 
even for a hidden danger, if I step back, it is a shame. मेरे लिए uh, he, uh, the knight says that मेरे लिए ये एक बहुत ही शर्मनाक बात है कि जो खतरा मुझे नजर भी नहीं आ रहा कि किसी पोशीदा खतरे की बुनियाद पर अगर मैं पीछे हट जाऊं तो this is a shame for me कि am I a brave person क्या मैं एक बहादुर इंसान कहलाने के लायक हूं फिर अगर मैं इस सिचुएशन uh, में अगर मैं पीछे हट जाता हूं क्या मैं एक बहादुर इंसान कहलाऊंगा virtue gives herself light that virtue virtue gives light through darkness for to wait that it is through darkness that virtue gains light or virtue receives light so at every step हर पॉइंट पर जिंदगी में अगर कोई अच्छाई है तो उसके साथ बुराई है रोशनी का तो हमें तभी पता चलता है ना जब वहां पर डार्कनेस भी हो अगर डार्कनेस का कोई कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं हो वो है तो रोशनी का कैसे पता चलेगा इसी तरह से अगर सफेद है तो सया का कैसे पता चलेगा तो सफेद और सया एक देर इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन इन दिस वर्ल्ड तो दैट इज द रीजन ही सेज दैट विरचू गिवस हर सेल लाइट थ्रू डार्कनेस फॉर टू वेर इट इज थ्रू डार्कनेस दैट वी कम टू नो अबाउट द विरचूज हमें अच्छाई का बुराई की वजह से ही पता चलता है हमें अंधेरे की वजह से ही लाइट का पता चलता है ये बट शी सेड यस बट कोथ शी वट शी सेड द पैरल ऑफ दिस प्लेस the danger at this place i better want than you i know better she said that okay you are right whatever you are saying this is also fine that you uh, have got your own philosophy of life but she says that main kyunki is jagah par rahi hui hu mujhe is main behtar yahan ke khatrat ko jaanti hu do now too late halanki ab bahut she says that bahut der ho chuki hai it's too late to uh, warn you to tell you of the danger i to wish you back return with foul disgrace that ab is mauke par agar tumhe wapas jane ka kaha jaye it is a disgrace it is a bad disgrace and uh, to return back uh, since there is a danger since there is a coming danger so at this time if i ask you to go back with this disgrace because of the coming danger it will be a disgrace it will be a shame for you yet wisdom warns still wit the wisdom it warns that whilst foot is in the gate ke jab ke to stay the step air force to retreat ke jab step kar chuke ho jab wahan par uske darwaze tak aa chuke ho to it's better if you have both the options to stay step to when you are putting in the step in you should be able to draw back ab wapas aane ka rasta bhi maujood hona chahiye this is the wandering wood this errors den what she said this is wandering wood wandering it is a lonely desolate this errors den error symbolizes Error is the uh, th there is a dragon. Den is the cave. So uh, the dragon symbolizes error. A monster vile, whom God and men does hate. Therefore, I read beware. Fly, fly, quoth Den. The fearful dwarf. This is no place for living men. Now uh, she is warning the knight. She tells him that. this is the errors cave he lives there it is a monster it is a very ugly deadly monster whom god and men equally hate everybody loathes him everybody hates the monster har koi usse nafrat karta hai therefore i read read is be aware i warn you i warn you to be aware of this monster he is very deadly he is very uh, dangerous fly fly now the dwarf since um, the dwarf was afraid of such situation so what he said quoth his said fly fly he said that run from this place since he was afraid kyunki wo bahut zyada us jagah se ye baatein sunkar wo bahut zyada khauf zyada ho chuka tha to dwarf ne kaha ki ye koi logon ke rehne ki jagah nahi hai agar ye is tarah ke jagah hai jahan pe ke ek aisa monster reh raha hai jo ke bahut डेंजरस है जिससे खुदा और तमाम इंसान नफरत करते हैं देन इट इज नॉट अ प्लेस फॉर लिविंग बींग्स के ये इंसानों के रहने की जगह नहीं है फिर सो ही इज 
shouting that they should leave the place that it is a dangerous place he was fearful of the situation after listening to the conversation between the lady between lady una and the knight usne jab un dono ke darmiyan wo jo conversation thi wo jo cheez thi jab usne wo suni to wo wahan se jane ke liye taiyar tha ke bas hum mazid hame yahan par nahi rukna chahiye ye koi insano ke rehne ki jagah nahi hai but full of fire and greedy hardiment hardiment is the eager boldness he was the knight was very eager he was very bold and eager to do something but full of fire fire he had that uh, इंटरनल डिजायर उसके अंदर एक फुल ऑफ फायर उसके अंदर एक आग लगी हुई थी कि वो कोई काम ऐसा करे कोई ब्रेवरी का कोई कोई वेलर का वो अपनी स्ट्रेंथ दिखाए है जिसमें कोई ऐसे वो हेरोक डीड कोई ऐसा करे तो वो उस चीज के लिए ग्रीडी था उस पर ये सारी वार्निंग उस पर ये सारे खतरात वो कोई असर नहीं कर रहे थे वो किस चीज का उसको शौक था उसको किस चीज की तपिश थी कि वो कुछ ऐसा काम करे कि जिसमें उसकी पावर उसकी ब्रेवरी उस कि वेलर को चैलेंज हो और वो उसका इस्तेमाल कर सके वो अपनी जो हेरो क्वालिटीज है उनको यूटिलाइज कर सके बिकॉज सो फार ही दे हैड स्टार्टेड देयर जर्नी जब से उन्होंने ये जर्नी स्टार्ट की है नाइट ने ऐसा कुछ नहीं किया कोई ऐसा इंसिडेंट ही नहीं आया है कि जिसमें उसकी ब्रेवरी उसकी स्ट्रेंथ उसकी पावर विगर को चैलेंज किया गया हो या जहां पर उसको अपनी नाइटली क्वालिटीज को एग्जिबिट करने का मौका मिला हो so he was uh, burning with that fire that he really wanted to do something wo kuch karna chahta tha koi bravery ka act karna chahta tha and greedy hardiment hardiment is eager boldness now greedy why greedy he was greedy for it uske bas wo itna usme urge thi is kadar uski internal desire is kadar strong thi ki usko lalach tha ki bas ab ye mauka mila hai usne zarur ye kaam karna hai usne kisi qeemat par isko nahi chhodna so this uh, first line is very meaningful representing the inner feelings of the knight towards that dangerous situation now look at it uh, three of the characters present there they have got different feelings the dwarf and lady una lady una wants him and she says that it's too late for me to ask you to withdraw or to go back from this situation because it will be a kind of uh, understating the your bravery and your power your um, strength on the other hand we had the dwarf who was um, uh, fearful who was afraid of the situation after listening to the conversation between lady una and the knight when he comes to know that this is the cave of error where the monster lives who is uh, hated by god and by men also he is ready to leave from that place and not only leave by walking or by running he says fly fly we should run like anything ki unko wahan se bas ud kar gayab ho jana chahiye aur kisi bhi cheez ka ko ka samna nahi karna chahiye since it is a dangerous place kyunki wahan par khatra hai wahan par rehne ki to usne uh, and what he said his line was it is not a place fit for hum, for men ke ye for living men ke ya, ye koi जिंदा लोगों के रहने की जगह नहीं है द यूथफुल नाइट कुड नॉट फॉर ऑट बी स्टेड ऑट इज फॉर एनीथिंग बाय एनी मीन्स स्टेड इज रिस्ट्रेन दैट द नाइट कुड नॉट बी रिस्ट्रेन उसको किसी कीमत पर भी रोका नहीं जा सकता था एज आई जस्ट डिस्कस्ड कि उसके अंदर वो एक इंटरनल अर्ज थी एक डिजायर थी कि उसने हर हाल में ये अब एक एनकाउंटर ऐसा होगा कि अगर यहां पर खतरा है तो उसको उसकी ब्रेवरी के लिए ये एक चैलेंज था कि अब उसको मौका मिलेगा कि वो अपनी ब्रेवरी अपनी वेलर को एग्जिबिट कर सके बट फोर्थ ऑन टू दी डार्क सम होल ही वेंट सो वट ही डेड ही वेंट फोर्थ वो आगे गया एक डार्क होल था उसने एंड लुक टेन वो अंदर गया अंदर जाके उसने एक डार्क होल के अंदर देखा हिज ग्लिस्टरिंग armor made glistering is glittering bright shining his bright shining armor armor is the weapon his sword basically uh, his glistering armor refers to his sword ki uske paas jo talwar thi made a little glooming light much like a shade so uh, his sword made a little like light like a shade to wo un sare uh, 
थ्रेट से उन सारी वार्निंग से ड्वाफ के कावर्ड एटीट्यूड से का नाइट के ऊपर कोई असर नहीं हुआ था ही वॉज स्टिल रेडी टू गो इन एंड टू हैव द चैलेंज एंड टू फाइट अगेंस्ट द ईवल उसने क्या किया वो आगे गया ही लुक्ड इन टू दैट कैव एंड हिज सिंस ही वॉज कैरिंग दट शॉर्ड इन हिज हैंड तो वो जो शॉर्ड उसने अपने हाथ में पकड़ी हुई थी वो किस तरह से वहां उसके अंदर उस, उसकी रोशनी गई क्योंकि वो बहुत तेज धार आला था चमक रही थी बहुत ज्यादा तो उसकी लाइट उसके जो तलवार है जो शॉर्ड है उसकी लाइट केव के अंदर इसी तरह से पड़ी जैसे कि कोई शेड हो किसी चीज का साया गुजरा हो By which he saw the ugly monster plane. Now the sword worked for him in two ways. First, it worked for him as a light. उसको उसकी light की वजह से वो जो shade उसके से उस तलवार से उस cave में पड़ा he was able to see the monster. Secondly, it served for him as a weapon. Thirdly, for the the it was good for him when that the monster saw the knight with that weapon. ताके वो उस पर उसी तरीके से फ्यूरियसली अटैक नहीं किया उसने तो सो इट इट हैड अ नंबर ऑफ परपजेस सो ही सॉ दैट अगली मॉन्स्टर देयर सो द मॉन्स्टर वाज वेरी अगली हाफ लाइक अ सरपेंट सरपेंट इज अ स्नेक अ लार्ज स्नेक हॉरिबल हॉरिबली डिस्प्लेड डिस्प्लेड इज स्प्रेड आउट सो द मॉन्स्टर लुक्ड लाइक half of its body was like a serpent it was like a large snake it was spread all around but the other half did woman's shape retain half of its body was like that of a serpent and the other half of its body was like a him a woman most loathsome filthy foul and full of vile disdain now these words these reflect his feelings towards the uh, that how he felt by looking at that monster loathsome it was hateful kabil e nafrat tha filthy is dirty extremely dirty foul is bad very bad and full of vile disdain and it it was bad in all respects now um, this is the description of the monster that when he, the knight looked into the cave uh, the monster was he looked the, uh, the he had a uh, look at the monster it was very ugly it was um, uh, in form in the figure it appeared half of it appeared like a woman and the ha- other half of it appeared like a serpent a large snake and as she lay upon the dirty ground and she was lying upon the dirty ground upon the uh, foul ground which was all dirty everywhere her huge long tail her den all overspread so her, all her cave den is the cave and her long tail she had a very long tail and that long tail it was spread all over the cave yet one was in knots and many bots up wound bots is the folds so um, the the tail was lying it was overspread all over the cave or the cave was full with the with the knots and folds of her tail up wounds is the encircled they the tail was encircled there were number of circles that were made so it was very huge very very long tail pointed with mortal sting so at the other end there was a very poisonous sting on the other hand of her there bred a thousand young ones which she daily fed of her their bred bred uh, she uh, she had she bore a thousand young ones there are a number of her offspring who were lying all over that place which daily which she daily fed she used to feed them daily so she had a number of outsp- uh, offspring there she had thousands of os- offspring uh, whom she bred every day so um, um, if we look at these lines uh, 
Spencer gave a vivid description of the ground, uh, not only of the jungle and later on of the cave also, that when the knight looked into it, we have the vivid description of the monster also, that it was a very ugly monster, it was huge, it was filthy, it was loathsome, it was dirty. We have a description of every kind of So, uh, uh, Spencer has added the pictorial quality also to his uh, poetry. I mean, words ke through we can visualize the things ke wo cave kis tarah ka hoga ya jo monster hai usko itne is qadar folds hain ke pura cave uski jo um, tail hai uske folds aur uske jo knots hain usse uske encircling se jo hai wo fill hua hua hai and there were thousands of her offsprings whom she every day fed so every day she used to feed them so she has got so the monster had the offsprings also and on the other end of her something very important that on the other end of her tail she had the sting also that was mortal mortal sting why mortal sting because it was deadly it was very dangerous for human beings definitely whosoever she would sting the person would die sucking upon her poisonous dugs each one of sundry shapes yet all ill favored soon as that uncouth light upon them shone into her mouth they crept and sudden all were gone so this is the description that sucking upon her poisonous dugs they were uh, sucking from her poisonous udders and each one of sundry sundry refers to uh, different types various sundry refers to uh, different shapes so they were all of different shapes there were thousands of them in the cave wahan par hazaron ki tadad mein uske offsprings maujood the lekin un sab ke mukhtalif shape thi sab mukhtalif shapes mein the yet all ill favored ill favored har kisi ki mukhtalif shape thi lekin sare hi ugly the sare hi bad surat bad numa the soon as that uncouth light upon them shone jaise hi un par light padi aur un un ke upar roshni padi into her mouth they crept un sab ne uske muh mein jana shuru kar diya and sudden all were gone aur ekdam se sab ke sab uske muh mein chale gaye so as soon as uh, there was light upon them, the light of that sword the, through which the knight could see the uh, dragon, could see the monster. Just light ki madad se knight ne monster ko dekha tha aur jo cave ki situation thi aur jo halat thi jo monster ka size aur uske jo offsprings se unko dekha tha. Usi roshni ki madad se jab un offsprings ne light dekhi us cave mein, they all crept into the monster's mouth their dam upstart out of her den afraid afraid is afraid a should be replaced a double f r a i d this is afraid the modern english equivalent afraid and rushed forth hurling her hideous tail hideous is loathsome hated kabale nafrat so what that um, dam is the mother she started she started up, the monster started up, out of her den afraid. She was so afraid of because of this light that she started and rushed forth. Or usne started running, hurling her hideous tail. She started whirling her loathsome, her hate, hateful tail about her cursed head whose folds displayed were stretched now forth at length without any trail and trail now what happened when she started running all the folds of her uh, tail they were unfolded and it the tail was all in stressed position she looked about and seeing one in mile mile is the armor uh, when she looked around and we when she looked at the knight that he has got the weapon he has got the armor in his hand armed to point sought back to turn again so she returned back to turn again for light she hated as the deadly bale 
veil is the evil she hated light as if it is something the the most evil of every bad thing to us उसको लाइट से इसी कदर नफरत थी जिस तरह के हम किसी बुराई से नफरत करते हैं सो इट फॉर हर फॉर द मॉन्स्टर इट वाज द इविलेस्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर द मॉन्स्टर द लाइट वाज इविल इट वाज द मोस्ट डेडफुल डेडली इविल ए वांट इन डेजर्ट डार्कनेस टू रिमेन वेयर प्लेन नन माइट हर सी नॉर शी सी एनी प्लेन so she loved to remain in the darkness and where nobody could see her and she should not see anybody she loved to remain in darkness which when the valiant elf perceived he leapt as lion fears upon the flying prey and with his trenchant blade her boldly kept from turning back and forced her to stay so what happened the situation is very um, grave here very serious the knight who had come to fight against the dragon again against the monster uh, first he looked at the condition that there was a huge monster inside uh, having a long tail and the, on, the, on the other end of the tail there was a poisonous sting also and which which when the valiant elf valiant as elf refers to the knight that the knight who was the elf elfen's son he leapt on the on that uh, monster as lion fears upon the flying prey wo apne wo monster ki taraf usi tarike se bhaga jaisa ke sher apne ek bhagte hue ya udte hue shikar ki taraf bhagta hai so you can well imagine the situation ki kis tarike se jo hai wo kis phurti ke sath jo hai wo knight ne monster ki taraf bada hai ya uski taraf wo lapka hai uski taraf hamla karne ke liye and with his trenchant blade aur apni sword ki wajah se apne use tez sharp blade ki wajah se har captly हर बोल्डली कैप्ट उसने बहुत बहुत भादरी से उसने उसे वापस मुड़ने से रोका है एंड फोर्स हर्स टू स्टे उसको वहां पर रहने पर उसी पोजीशन में जैसे कि उसने उसे पकड़ा है उसे रहने पर मजबूर किया है सो ही फोर्स हर्स टू स्टे इन दैट पोजीशन देयर विद एंड रेग्ड शी लाउडली गैन टू ब्रे ब्रे इज रोर she started producing some sounds from her mouth usne kyunki ab usko shadid gussa aa chuka tha kyunki she was entrapped by the knight uh, he had uh, made her stay in the position where uh, he could she started braying she started roaring and turning fierce she became wild is kadar dangerous ho chuki thi her speckled tail ad adorned so what happened she raised her tail threatening her angry sting so what happened she was trying to him to dismay so in order to make the knight not to harm uh, her she um, what she did who not aghast his mighty hand and horns the stroke down from her head onto her shoulder glanced he gathered all his courage and with his with his uh, very powerful hand he tried to strike from her head onto her shoulders much daunted with that dent dent is the stroke now the monster became afraid because of that uh, stroke of the uh, sword her sense was dazed she was puzzled the monster was puzzled confused confounded with that stroke yet kindling rage kindling means gathering she gathered her strength herself she gathered round and all at once her beastly body raised with doubled forces high above the ground so what happened the um, the now uh, the knight and the monster both were in a very critical position because both were in that cave and they were having a fierce fight now the um, since the knight ha had a hold of her uh, tail and did not let her move 
the monster tried to gather all her uh, anger all her strength and courage and at once what she did she suddenly raised her body on the uh, with double uh, doubled force with double strength above the ground what she did though wrapping up her rest stern around leapt fierce upon his shield and her huge train all suddenly about his body wound that hand or foot to stir he strove in vain god help the man so wrapped in errors endless train now this uh, this moment was very critical for the knight then the monster had wrapped him up under the circles of his tail um and it was um useless for him to um and he was all covered by the circles of the monster's tail so he was uselessly trying to uh, get his hand or foot free uh god help the man so wrapped in errors endless train errors endless so the monster so the knight was uh, uh encircled in the uh, encircled in the snare in the uh, shackles of the um, ta tail of the uh, monster so god help this uh, man since he has got uh, good intentions his lady sad to see his sore constraint now lady una his lady he here refers to lady una sad to see his sore constraint sore constraint is the trouble the suffering the lady was also sad she also when she looked at this condition uh, in which the knight was caught by the monster through his uh, tail he was all encircled by the uh, circles of uh, by the knots of the tail cried out now now sir knight shu what ye ye be and faith unto your force and be not faint strangle her else she sure will strangle thee now what she said she tried to she cried out and basically she was trying to remind him that what he was he was not something to uh, very dumb and dull who could be very easily conquered so she tried to gather up his courage once again and he said he asked him to realize that what he who he is and faith unto so lady una ne knight ko apni asal yaad karne ko kaha ke soche ke wo kya hai is uh, उस पर गौर करे और अपनी ताकत पर इहसार करे एंड उसको परेशान नहीं होना चाहिए क्योंकि अगर वो परेशान हो गया और अगर उसको मार ना सका तो ये मॉन्स्टर जो है वो यकीनन उसे मार देगी सो शी आस्ट हिम टू हैव फेथ ऑन हिज फोर्स ऑन हिज स्ट्रेंथ सिंस ही वॉज अ वेरी ब्रेव एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन एंड बी नॉट फेंट एंड यू शुड नॉट बी वीक यू आर नॉट वीक बी नॉट फेंट strangle her kill her else she sure will strangle thee thee here is you that if you don't kill her you sh you should have faith in your power in your valor in your strength and you should you should not be weak at this moment kill her if you do not kill her she will kill you the monster will kill you that when he heard when he heard all this whatever lady una had said so all these words they had a very good uh, impression on the knight's mind uh, it gathered his courage it gathered his um, all scattered courage in great perplexity he was in the entangled mind his gall did great for grief and high disdain so his uh, anger was it was greatly uh, stirred and knitting all his force got one hand free so when he tried to gather all his courage when he thought about the things that lady una had just said he co he was able to compose himself he was able to recompose himself his strength his valor so what he did when he was able to do that he could get his one hand free where with he gripped her gorge gorge is stomach 
with so great pain that soon to lose her wicked bands did her constrain so what happened when uh, he got one of his hand free he got hold of her stomach he got hold of the monster's stomach so hard that soon all the those circles all those knots that the monster had around the knight and the knight was free from them therewith she spewed out of her filthy maw maw is the stomach filthy is um, dirty very bad spew out is to vomit out so um, since the knight had got hold of the uh, monster's stomach so she vomited out vomited out uh, from her dirty stomach a flood of poison horrible and black she vomited out and the matter that she vomited out it uh, uh, it was uh, a poison like a very horrible and black material full of great lumps of flesh and gobbets raw so, so it contained pieces of raw flesh which stunk so vilely that it fro it forced him slack slack means to relax to uh, to go on the side the material that the monster vomited out usne jo bhi vomit kiya tha it was so filthy it's it had such a foul smell ke knight ko us jagah se piche hatna pada usko usko chhod dena padi har cheez uske liye wo smell jo thi wo naqabil e bardasht thi his grasping hold and from her turn him back ke wo wahan se उसने वो ग्रास छोड़ दी उसके स्टमक को छोड़ दिया और वो वहां से पीछे हट गया हर वॉमिट नाउ व्हाट डिड इट कंटेन फर्स्ट वी सॉ दैट इट कंटेन इट वाज ऑल ब्लैक नाउ दिस इज द कंट्रास्ट एट द बिगिनिंग वी डिस्कस्ड दैट द कलर ऑफ लेडी ओना द लैम्स कलर इट वाज ऑल वाइट इट वाज वाइटर देन स्नो इट वाज वाइटर देन मिल्क so this vomit since this is a monster's vomit it 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 is dark it is very filthy very um, it has got a smell foul smell and it it contains pieces of raw flesh it contains this is full of books and papers with loathly frogs and toads which eyes did lack and creeping sort way in the weedy grass her filthy pabrek all the place defiled has now the condition after her vomit is that that uh, whatever the material that was there here it is uh, the allegorical representation of the church in this uh, vomit whatever uh, the material has come out of her stomach it represents uh, the full of books and papers this represents the teachings of the uh, catholic church and loathly frogs and toads which which eyes did lack now this represents the clergy men of the catholic church and what did they do apparently it is a story i mean uh, that's um, it is a story uh, of the uh, monster and the knight that uh, when the monster vomited out the, the that uh, vomit uh, carried uh, flesh of uh, pieces of uh, raw uh, meat and books and papers and there were frogs and toads all those things were there and those the frogs and toads since they lacked eyes they did not have any eyes so they started um, creeping to the uh, grass that was nearby her fill the pabrek pabrek is the vomit it um, all the place defiled has it had made all the place filthy dirty and it was all foul smell everywhere as when old father nilus gains to swell so here this is extended simile this is the use of extended simile that it was in the same way the uh, the he has uh, made a comparison of the vomit of the monster with the river nile that what happens when the old father river uh, nilus gains to swell when it, when there is a flood in river nile with timely pride above the egyptian whale his fatty waves do fertile slime outwell and overflow each plain and lowly dale so what happens when there is a flood a flood in the river nile uh, they when it um, when it is uh, full uh, 
on the egyptian valleys there uh, there are um, waves of the water and those that water leaves the fertile uh, soil on the ground and everywhere on the plain and on the plain ground and the valleys and the low valleys everywhere it leaves a layer of the uh, mud which is very fertile but when his later spring gains to evolve huge heaps of mud he leaves wherein there breed 10000 kinds of creatures partly male and partly female of his fruitful seed such ugly monstrous shapes elsewhere man may no man read read is to see so what happened uh, later on these uh, this is full of uh, 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 mud uh, it leaves uh, uh, soil which is fertile it is spread everywhere now back from this line onwards from 10000 kinds of creatures partly male and partly female of his fruitful seed for so from this line again we are talking about the uh, monster that its offspring half of them they are male and half of them are female and they are of 10000 different types of creatures such ugly monstrous shapes elsewhere may no man read that nobody would ever have seen such ugly uh, monstrous creatures as were present there as the offspring of the monster the same sore sore annoyed has the night so this scene has annoyed the night greatly that well nigh choked with the deadly stink that the stink the smell of that vomit was deadly it was uh, fainting his forces fail ne can no longer fight that he lost his all strength because of the stink of the filthy vomit whose courage when the fiend perceived to shrink and his cu- courage when the monster saw that he had lost uh, his courage she poured forth out of her hellish stink hellish sink she poured forth out of her hellish sink her fruitful cursed spawn of serpents small deformed monsters foul and black as ink which swarming all about his legs did crawl and him and combat sore but could not hurt at all so when the monster observed Uh, that the night uh, was lo- losing strength because of the stink of that foul smell she poured forth she what she, what she did she poured forth out of her uh, uh, stomach sink is stomach out of her big a uh, hellish sink uh, what is hellish sink her long big stomach her fruitful cursed spawn she her offsprings were there she uh, released her of springs these were small serpents and they were deformed monsters and they were all foul and black and their color was as black as ink so there is the use of simile also which swarming all about his legs did crawl so they started crawling around the uh, night and they did not they could not uh, these uh, small serpents they could not hurt the night but they uh, troubled him they were swarming with his legs trying trying to climb him as gentle shepherd in sweet even tide when rudy phoebus gains to walk in west high on an hill his flock to view to waven wide marks which do bite their hasty supper best so the once again the use of the simile these uh, monsters uh, these small serpents they were trying to climb up the uh, night as if a, she- a shepherd would go on the um, um, on the um, top of a hill in order to see his uh, uh, flock of sheep that uh, uh, in order to see that which of his sheep they are uh, coming back and which ones are uh, trying to have their last uh, uh, supper the, the last parts of their um, food a cloud of cumbrous gates do him molest 
all striving to infix their feeble stings, that from their noyance he nowhere can rest, but with his clownish hands, their tender wings, he brusheth oft, and oft doth mar their murmurings. So what happened? There was a cloud of small flies with blood-sucking trunks, and it all... It was such a um, dirty, hateful scene. All stri what they were doing, they, they had small, they had very weak stings, and they were trying to inflict misery to the night. Wo usko pareshan karne ki, usko miserable banane ki koshish kar rahi thi. That from their nuance, he nowhere can rest. That he was very restless because he, wa he was very annoyed because of their presence there. And with his hands, with his clownish hands, he was trying to, uh, he uh, was trying to uh, get rid of them and he brought an end uh, to their uh, murmurings by killing them all. Thus, ill-bested and fearful more of shame than of the certain peril he stood in, Half furious unto his foe he came, resolved in mind all suddenly to win, or soon to lose before he once would lend. So, in such a sad condition, in such a sad plight, the uh, knight was fearful. He was afraid of the shame. He was not afraid that he would be killed. Usko apni jaan ki koi parwa nahi thi. Wo us, uh, उसको इस इज्जत का खतरा था कि जिसके वजह से वो जिस काम के लिए वहां पर आया था उसमें अगर उसको देन ऑफ दी सर्टेन पैरल हिस्टोडेन के जिस खतरे में वो खड़ा था उसके इसको परवाह नहीं थी उसको परवाह थी इज्जत की हाफ फ्यूरियस अन टू हिज फो ही केम सो ही वाज वेरी फ्यूरियस व्हेन ही केम टू फाइट विद हिज फो रिजॉल्वड इन माइंड ऑल सडनली टू विन ही मेड अप हिज माइंड वंस अगेन दैट ही हैज कम देयर टू विन टू टू गेट ओवर with that monster and soon to or soon to lose before he once would lend that before falling that he would once more give it a try uh, before losing and stroke at her with more than manly force so he gathered all his courage his manly power manly here is symbolic of every type of courage that a man could have that from her body full of filthy sin so uh, he uh, stroked her body. He wrapped her hateful hand without remorse. A stream of cold black blood forth gushed from her course. What happened? He made a stroke and he separated the monster's head from its body and he could do that. He was able to do that with all his courage and with all his hate against her. Uh, and there was a stream of black blood from her that started running out of her body. Or uski body se black color ka jaisi uska sar tan se juda hua monster ka uski body se kale rang ka khun behna shuru ho gaya. Her scattered brood, uske jo uh, offsprings hain, jo idhar udhar bikhre pade the, jo idhar udhar ghum rahe the, soon as their parent deer they saw so rudely falling to the ground, groaning full deadly, all with troublous fear, gathered themselves about her body round. So, all those small serpents, all those offsprings of the monster, they started getting, uh, gathering round the serpent's body. When they saw their mother, their monster mother was dying, it was falling on the ground, they started gathering round her body. Weaning their wanted, entrance to have found at her wide mouth but being there withstood they flocked all about her bleeding wound and sucked up their dying mother's blood making her death their life and eke her hurt their good so they what they wanted to do they wanted to enter the monster's mouth as they uh, they used to do before that but they had to stand there because the wound the wound was bleeding heavily and there was no way for them to uh, get in uh, or to enter the body they they stood there and they started sucking up the uh, blood that was coming out that was flowing out of her there uh, out of their um, mother's body 
so what they did by sucking the their mother's blood what they did they made this blood that was coming out of her body it was her death and they made it their life it was their death and they made their mother's death their good so the knight finally defeated the monster he had killed the monster so uh, we will have a little review of lecture 10 that um, it's a story of a knight um, who um, went with lady una and he was given up he was assigned this task by uh, queen gloriana the queen of the fairy land with them they had a lamb and a dwarf also when they were going on the way uh, one day the weather was overcast it was heavily clouded um, they uh, were forced to take refuge they entered a cave and in that cave they forgot their way and they reached a uh, further they further reached a, a cave where there was a monster inside it the knight had a long fight and um, it was a huge terrible monster which was filthy loathsome and uh, after the um, after a long fight with the monster the knight was able to slay the monster and um, allegorically there is allegory there is the representation of vice and virtue at a number of places uh, first of all the knight is symbolic of holiness he um, then lady una symbolizes truth the uh, monster symbolizes uh, uh, error then we had the monster's gods the uh, the material that uh, the monster vomited out that also had allegorical representation here that represented the uh, teachings of the um, catholic church and uh, it had uh, that also contained pieces of raw flesh it was significant it contained the uh, uh, toads and um, Uh, frogs that lacked eyes that did not have eyes so um, finally the knight was able to slay the monster he was successful he was victorious after this we will um, uh, proceed that what happened next how did they because from this onwards they will start their journey again because their basic aim was not to kill the monster their basic purpose was to get the land of or the castle of uh, lady lady una father so we will um, have that in the next lecture allah hafiz